Hello, hello, and welcome to you. This is going to be a reading for the snake people. So um, today we're going to work on Chinese astrology. Let's go down the list. My name is Shushana, and we're going to work on what to expect for the year 2024 if you are the year of the snake in Chinese astrology. So if you were born in... If you were born in 1941, 1953, 1965, 1977, 89, 2001, 2013, you are a snake. And you're one of my favorite signs to do a reading for because you have very interesting energy. And I believe there's... I believe, hmm, well, let's go through the elements if you don't know your element. 41 metal, 53 water, 65 wood, 77 fire, 89 earth, 2001 metal, 2013 water. The next time that we're going to have a snake, a year of the snake in Chinese astrology is going to be in 2025, and they're going to represent the wood element. So... I need to have my timer here because I'm on time. So let's see what we got going on for the snake people. So I don't have any intro messages for you. I do not use tarot. I only use medicine cards, energy cards, positive affirmation cards. I am a spiritual consultant, energy reader, diagnoser. Let's go straight into it. What is the what is the physical work that the people have to work on? The snake people, what is your work? your work that needs to be done okay we already have the first card we have sacred songs using your voice speaking up singing gospel singing psaltery singing healing songs doing some chants this is very important so in the spirit world, there is no language that is understood or able to be spoken. You cannot, you cannot speak a certain language in the spirit world. The spirit world communicates through sound. So it's very important for you to develop your soul song signature, your signature soul song that you come up with yourself with your own energy. And that is basically going to represent you A lot of you feel, I feel like you won't understand this. This won't really make sense to you, so I'm trying to find another way to explain it. Um, when you sing, there's a vibration that travels, and that is the only thing that is understood in the spirit world. So it's important for you to develop your signature soul song in order to communicate yourself because it's very important to communicate when we are in the spirit world. We encounter, we encounter certain entities and we have to use our soul song to communicate to them that they do not have the authority to harm us because we are not of their caliber. And when we communicate through soul song or soul 
song chanting or even humming a tune that you have created yourself to deter them away through your signature vibration if that makes sense to you sorry if it doesn't but that is what this card is involved with inner work the inner work for you we have facing confronting yourself in the negative light in the negative aspects in the shadow aspects in your lower vibrational aspects so taking a look at your negative characteristics taking a look at your lower vibrational habits and lifestyle intentions thoughts where are they coming from are they coming from you are they coming from an external influence are they coming from modern society expectations are they coming from subliminal messages are they coming from social media are they coming from demons where does the lower self behavior get influenced by where is it coming from and determining what that is and getting rid of it okay um for some of you this is just an example let's say it's alcohol let's say every time you drink alcohol you get violent and you start a fight you know and you evaluate and you do some journaling on your behavior and you look well every time i get violent every time i fight every time i want to pick a fight with someone and i act unreasonable i'm under the influence of what so cut that out for some of you it's going to be alcohol for some of you it's going to be energy drinks having too much artificial sugar and artificial supplements and artificial caffeine Believe it or not, having a lot of caffeine can make you very aggressive and angry and want to start a fight, especially if you drink it on an empty stomach. Um, and of course, for some of you, it might be substance abuse. So being honest with yourself as to what the source is, what is the source that is making you behave in a habitual mad, mad manner where it's becoming a habit where you're on routine doing a certain lower vibrational action that needs to be modified or confronted or look like looked at that you might be shoving under a carpet and not wanting to confront an aspect of thyself spiritual advice for people born this year of the snake we have replacing all of your fears for unconditional love if you're in fear of success or fear of change fear that you're never going to end up where you want to truly be how can you replace all that with unconditional love and have unconditional love for yourself enough to feel deserving of change it doesn't seem like you are very happy with your current circumstances it seems like you hate your circumstances or you hate the past year 2023 and how everything went and there needs to be this divine intervention in your life is how i feel that you feel about your own life i simply read the energy
We have being present, being present. When we are present in the present moment, we are appreciating the gift. We are appreciating the blessing of the present moment. We are alive. We are breathing. You seem to toil yourself in the past or worry about the future. And it's very important that for the two, the year 2024, you remind yourself to be present in the present moment on a daily basis because you have this very bad habit of digging in the past and worrying about the future. And when you dig in the past and when you worry about the future, you're actually creating more blockages for yourself because you can't move forward when you're not dealing with this beautiful present moment that is temporary. It's temporary. This, this present moment is temporary and that's why it's the one that has to be dealt with. This precious moment, appreciating the simplicity of life. The hardest thing for humanity to understand is the simplicity of life. How simple life actually is. And we let life just pass us by. We're always worrying about the future. Always unable to get rid of the past because we're bitter and resentful towards the past. And we don't appreciate the present moment of just of being able to kiss your kids goodbye to school. How is that not a priceless a priceless moment. You're never going to kiss your kid goodbye for school again in that same manner on a different day. It's going to be a different day. One day, your children won't live with you anymore. And you're going to cry and you're going to miss hearing their voices, hearing them fight, hearing them bicker, hearing them being loud. And we get so angry, we get so angry, we get so frustrated by the very blessings themselves. And one day, it will be nothing but the echo, nothing but the echo of the memory. You know, we get a phone call from our mom and we reject the phone call we silence the phone. We let it hit the voicemail because we don't want to get it. We don't want to get the phone. And one day our mom is never going to call us because they're going to pass on just like everything is temporary. So why worry? You know, we get angry when we're in line at the store. We can't stand waiting in line. And what are we in a rush for? What are we in a rush for? You want to live your life so fast. You want to be buried in a hole so fast. And when we are in the coffin spiritually, where would you want to be when you're in that coffin and you're thinking about what it would be like to be buried six feet under? Where would you want to be? You would want to be in line. You would you will miss being in line at the store buying groceries for your family. You will miss that one day. You will miss that you were breathing this this oxygen that all of our ancestors were also breathing. And it's so important that when you feel this dark as you've been feeling lately that you do death meditations. What is a death meditation? A death meditation is when you visualize your funeral. You visualize being buried six feet under and you think about all of your actions in your life and how you contributed to people's pleasure or pain. And I feel like a lot of you need like this wake up call where you're just taking things for granted, taking people for granted that love you and have been there and are part of your life. And you just always feel like there's more to unravel. 
or there's more that you deserve or there's more to life. No, there isn't. There, there is nothing more to life than reuniting with our loved ones. That is all. Reuniting with loved ones and creating a harmony with all of our relationships. appreciating that we are not in a homeless shelter we are not in a jail we are not in a hospital we are free in our homes doing the best that we can in these insane times and enjoying the sun enjoying waking up every morning to the sun and having an opportunity to live a better life um, for a lot of you I feel like you feel like you're never gonna get there you feel like you're so far away from a better life but it just seems like you're lacking an experience you are lacking an experience that is reminding you that your life is perfect as it is. And I know you're going to think that's ridiculous because you're going through all kinds of craziness. But if you really look at the bigger picture, you're safe. You have a roof over your head and you're going to work on improvements. It's going to take time. But in the meantime, you are where you need to be. I remember one time I had planned on moving to a specific country and I was so stubborn about wanting to be in that country and I had packed all my things I was getting all my ticket situated ready to go to this location and I experienced a detour where I was energetically being pushed to not go there and to detour to an island instead. And I ended up in the island that I'm at now for six, almost seven years now. And even though it's not where I ultimately want to be in the long term, it's where I need to be in the present moment. And what's crazy about it is had I gone to my original destination, had I gone to the country that I wanted to go to, it would have been really bad. It would have been really bad because the country that I wanted to go to a couple months later after I detoured and ended up somewhere else, they went through... Um, I don't want to say the word. Um, the entire town was, there, there were riots and protesters and people very angry against that particular government and people were tearing down statues and tearing down monuments in the location that I had originally chosen. So I tell you that because sometimes what we want is not always what is best for us. Okay. And I truly wanted that country and I was pushed to not go to that country. You know, I was energetically pushed towards an island to be in for a couple of years. Instead, I had left the mainland seven years ago because of the zombie apocalypse that's going on in the mainland. And um, you have to be appreciative of the safety that you're in and appreciate the present moment more. And then with time, when we appreciate what we have, we are given an opportunity for more. Does that make sense? 
So do not take the people or place that you have the support that you have for granted because some people don't have any support at all. Zero. Okay, that is way too many cards. Um, but let's take them. So working on your confidence. The snake people need to work on their confidence this year. You need to work on protecting yourself during your travels, meaning do not be trusting. Be more discerning this year when you are traveling. And stick with what you already know to be true. So anything new, anything new is going to be a bit sketchy and you're going to have to work on your self-confidence because your confidence is going to ultimately guide you to the best place to relocate you know this doesn't have to be a physical move this could be like a state of mind this could be like a new shift this could be a new place where you're going to work at a new place where you're going to study it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical move, although for some of you it will. But stick to what you know is tried and true when it comes to the surrounding support that surrounds the main issue. So let's say you're going to do something brand new. Make sure that it's supported by something familiar okay i hope this makes sense to you because this is just a collective reading that i just read the energy that is just what is coming out um only you will understand what i'm talking about advice for 2024 from the wisdom of the Tao deck what, what happened where did it go was it this one or this one Casting off all that no longer serves you and restoring what remains useful. Create new strategies, finalize your ideas, and ready yourself for the coming transformation. There is no time to waste. So there's a transformation that you're working on and, and that's why you're feeling uncomfortable and anxious. And then we have leaping forward and daring to make that change. There will be sacrifices and roadblocks, but you are protected. It is an imminent move. What is stale and depressed will be revitalized with this new energy. This is the card of change. So this matches everything that we're talking about. So very interesting reading. I think that I'm going to go ahead and end that there. Maybe two more cards for you. I feel like a lot of you are going to be traveling and just be careful in your travels. I just I just get this feeling of being more discerning this year. This is a year where the snake needs to be discerning and very careful and very calculated through their transformation. Another thing I wanted to say is the negative, like let's say that you feel like you've been lashing out a lot. Sometimes this has to do with your environment. Are you lashing out because you're not happy where you live? You're not happy where you work? You're not happy with who you're married to? And make those adjustments. You know, anger is not always a bad thing. Anger is letting us know that something needs to be worked on or looked at adjusted, modified, realigned, or completely sep separated from. Be 
because I don't feel like the anger or frustration is unreasonable. I don't feel that it's unreasonable. I just feel that it needs to be dealt with. Making your intentions clear. Voicing your opinion. Speaking up to defend yourself is also associated with this card in the beginning. What is your intuition trying to tell you? And we have do something to change your energy. Okay. Do something to change your energy. And what is your intuition trying to tell you? So there's a lot going on with you. I don't want to pull too many cards because I don't want to make things more complicated for you. I'm trying to simplify it for you. But um, there's a lot... That you, your this year is going to be a transformative year for the year of the snake people. It's going to be a year of transformation. And I feel like it has to do with you becoming a better you. You becoming a better version of you. You disconnecting from the old version of you and becoming someone brand new with everything that you've learned. Um, what color do the people of the year of the snake need to incorporate more in their life this year? Color for snake people. Okay, we have inhaling a breath of life. We have the color peach. The color peach is associated with being gentle with yourself and your process. Don't try to force everything overnight. You're going to be receiving a stream of information. You're going to reconnect with your highest self. And you're going to allow your higher self to tell you what needs to be done. And in the beginning, you might feel uncomfortable and lost, but you have to kind of trust that the answers are already within you. There's certain problems that you feel that you don't have the answer to, but you actually do. You tune into your highest self. Try to find a time in the day where you're home alone. This is very important. Um, it's very difficult for this to happen when there's people home. You want to do this when no one is home. When no one is home, sit there very quietly. And think about the color peach surrounding you. A gentle piece of clarity, a gentle peach of clarity. Peach is soft in the outside. Focus on your breathing and just start Receiving all of the answers to your questions. If you have a backyard, sit outside in the backyard. And silence will answer all of your questions. You just have to be relaxed and still. 
allowing your mind to clear, allowing the negative thoughts to just be pushed away. The first couple of messages are going to be interferences and you're going to push the first two. You're going to push the first two messages away because they're just negative talk interferences. And usually about the third, fourth, and fifth, sixth, seventh messages start making a little more sense. In between those times, you might experience a little bit of negative self-talk and you can just push those away and say, no, I'm only accepting positive guidance right now that is going to serve my life, that is going to serve my highest good. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye.